Question one. In a tense situation where a person is becoming increasingly aggressive, what is the most effective initial strategy for a security guard in Maine to de-escalate the situation? A. Use physical restraint immediately to prevent any potential harm. B. Yell at the person to assert authority and control the situation. C. Maintain a calm and non-threatening demeanor while actively listening to the person. D. Ignore the person until they calm down on their own. Correct answer. C. Maintain a calm and non-threatening demeanor while actively listening to the person. Explanation. The most effective initial strategy for de-escalating a tense situation is to maintain a calm and non-threatening demeanor while actively listening to the person. According to the main security guard training guidelines, this approach helps in diffusing the situation without escalating it further. Using physical restraint immediately, option A, can be a last resort if there is an imminent threat of harm, but it can also escalate the situation if used prematurely. Yelling, option B, often provokes further aggression and undermines the authority and professionalism of the security guard. Ignoring the person, option D, can lead to the situation worsening and does not address the underlying issue causing the aggression. The correct approach focuses on de-escalation techniques that prioritize communication and understanding. Question 2. During a fire emergency in a main office building, which of the following actions should a security guard take first? A. Use the elevator to quickly evacuate the building. B. Call 911 and report the fire immediately. C. Attempt to extinguish the fire without notifying anyone. D. Block the exits to ensure no one leaves until the fire department arrives. C. Correct answer. B. Call 911 and report the fire immediately. Explanation. In the event of a fire emergency, the first action a security guard should take is to call 911 and report the fire immediately. According to the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, and Maine State Regulations, notifying emergency services is crucial to ensure a timely response from firefighters. Using the elevator, option A, during a fire is dangerous as elevators can malfunction or become trapped. Attempting to extinguish the fire without notifying anyone, option C, can delay the emergency response and may put the security guard at unnecessary risk. Blocking the exits, option D, is extremely dangerous and illegal as it prevents safe evacuation, potentially leading to fatalities. The correct course of action prioritizes safety and swift communication with emergency services. Question 3. Mr. Smith, a security guard in Maine, notices a person loitering near a restricted area in a warehouse late at night. The person appears to be tampering with the lock on a gate. What should Mr. Smith do first? A. Approach the person directly and demand an explanation for their actions. B. Call for backup and observe the person from a safe distance. C. Ignore the situation as it might be an employee working late. D. Use physical force to detain the person immediately. Correct answer. B. Call for backup and observe the person from a safe distance. Explanation. The appropriate first response for Mr. Smith in this scenario is to call for backup and observe the person from a safe distance. This approach ensures that he maintains his safety while monitoring the suspicious activity. According to Maine security regulations, a security guard should not directly confront a potentially dangerous individual without support, as this can escalate the situation and pose a personal safety risk. Ignoring the situation, option C, is not advisable, as it may allow unauthorized access or criminal activity to occur. Using physical force, option D, should only be a last resort if there is an immediate threat to safety and it is not the first step in handling such a situation. The correct response involves caution, communication, and preparedness to respond appropriately. Question 4. Under main law, what is the primary consideration a security guard must keep in mind when deciding to use force? A. The desire to quickly resolve the situation. B. The need to assert authority over the individual. C. The necessity to protect oneself or others from imminent harm. D. The importance of making an example out of the offender. Correct answer. C. The necessity to protect oneself or others from imminent harm. Explanation. Under main law, the primary consideration for a security guard when deciding to use force is the necessity to protect oneself or others from imminent harm. This principle is rooted in both state law and federal guidelines governing the use of force by security personnel. Using force should always be a last resort and only employed when there is a clear and present danger. 
The other options, such as quickly resolving the situation, option A, asserting authority, option B, or making an example out of the offender, option D, do not justify the use of force and can lead to legal and ethical violations. The correct approach emphasizes the protection of life and safety. Question 5. What legal limitation must a security guard in Maine observe when making a citizen's arrest? A. The security guard must read the suspect their Miranda rights. B. The security guard can only arrest someone if they have committed a felony. C. The security guard must immediately transport the suspect to a police station. D. The security guard must have witnessed the crime or have reasonable grounds to believe the person committed the crime. Correct answer. D. The security guard must have witnessed the crime or have reasonable grounds to believe the person committed the crime. Explanation. In Maine, a security guard making a citizen's arrest must have witnessed the crime or have reasonable grounds to believe the person committed the crime. This ensures that the guard acts within legal bounds and avoids wrongful detentions. Reading Miranda rights, option A, is a procedure for law enforcement officers, not private security guards. Limiting arrests to felonies only, option B, is incorrect as misdemeanors can also warrant citizens arrests if witnessed. Transporting the suspect to a police station, option C, is not the guard's responsibility. They should detain the suspect and wait for law enforcement to arrive. Proper understanding of legal limitations ensures lawful and appropriate actions. Question 6. Which of the following is the most effective technique for a security guard in Maine to identify suspicious behavior during a patrol? A. Conducting patrols at the same time every day. B. Using electronic surveillance exclusively and avoiding direct observation. C. Remaining observant and varying patrol routes and times. D. Only focusing on areas that have had previous incidents. Correct answer. C. Remaining observant and varying patrol routes and times. Explanation. The most effective technique for identifying suspicious behavior is to remain observant and vary patrol routes and times. This unpredictability makes it harder for potential offenders to anticipate security patterns, increasing the likelihood of detecting unusual activity. Conducting patrols at the same time every day, option A, can create predictable patterns that offenders can exploit. Relying solely on electronic surveillance, option B, can miss important details that a trained observer might notice. Focusing only on areas with previous incidents, option D, can leave other parts of the premises vulnerable. The correct approach involves active observation and strategic patrol planning. Question 7. What is the primary goal of using verbal de-escalation techniques in a potentially violent situation in Maine? A. To assert dominance over the aggressor. B. To provoke the aggressor into taking action. C. To safely diffuse the situation and prevent violence. D. To provide a distraction while other security measures are put in place. Correct answer. C. To safely diffuse the situation and prevent violence. Explanation. The primary goal of using verbal de-escalation techniques is to safely diffuse the situation and prevent violence. This involves using calm, non-confrontational language to reduce the intensity of the situation. Asserting dominance, option A, or provoking the aggressor, option B, can escalate tensions and lead to violence. Providing a distraction, option D, is not the main objective of de-escalation techniques. Instead, the focus is on reducing the immediate threat. Effective de-escalation prioritizes communication and empathy to resolve conflicts peacefully. Question 8. Ms. Johnson, a security guard in a main shopping mall, hears the fire alarm go off and sees smoke coming from a nearby store. What should Ms. Johnson do first? A. Run towards the fire to assess the situation closely. B. Immediately pull the fire alarm again to ensure everyone hears it. C. Call 911 and then start evacuating people from the area. D. Ignore the alarm, assuming it is a false alarm. Correct answer. C. Call 911 and then start evacuating people from the area. Explanation. In the event of a fire alarm and visible smoke, Miss Johnson should first call 911 to ensure that emergency services are alerted to the situation. Following this, she should begin evacuating people from the area to ensure their safety. Running towards the fire to assess the situation closely, option A, can put her in unnecessary danger. Pulling the fire alarm again, option B, is redundant and does not address the immediate need to contact emergency services and evacuate. Ignoring the alarm, option D, is highly dangerous and violates emergency response protocols. 
the correct approach prioritizes immediate communication with emergency services and the safe evacuation of people. Question 9. In Maine, what is the most appropriate action for a security guard to take if they witness a fellow guard accepting a bribe? A. Confront the guard directly and demand they return the bribe. B. Ignore the situation, as it is not their responsibility. C. Report the incident to their supervisor immediately. D. Accept. A share of the bribe to keep quiet. Correct answer. C. Report the incident to their supervisor immediately. Explanation. If a security guard witnesses a fellow guard accepting a bribe, the most appropriate action is to report the incident to their supervisor immediately. According to Maine's ethical standards and professional conduct guidelines, security guards have a duty to maintain integrity and honesty. Confronting the guard directly, option A, could lead to confrontation and is not as effective as formal reporting. Ignoring the situation, option B, fails to uphold ethical standards and could implicate the witness in wrongdoing. Accepting a share of the bribe, option D, is illegal and unethical, further compromising professional standards. Reporting ensures that appropriate measures are taken to address and rectify the misconduct. Question 10. What is a crucial first step in developing a security plan to mitigate risks at a main business facility? A. Conducting a thorough risk assessment to identify potential threats. B. Installing security cameras without assessing vulnerabilities. C. Implementing strict access control policies without consulting employees. D. Assuming that previous security measures are sufficient. Correct answer. A. Conducting a thorough risk assessment to identify potential threats. Explanation. The crucial first step in developing a security plan to mitigate risks is conducting a thorough risk assessment to identify potential threats. This involves evaluating all possible risks, understanding their impact, and prioritizing them to create an effective security plan. Installing security cameras without assessing vulnerabilities, option B, may leave some risks unaddressed. Implementing strict access control policies without consulting employees, option C, can lead to operational issues and lack of compliance. Assuming that previous security measures are sufficient, option D, can result in outdated and ineffective security protocols. A risk assessment is foundational to informed and comprehensive security planning. Question 11. Mr. Brown, a security guard at a main hospital, encounters a visitor who is visibly upset and shouting at the reception staff. What should Mr. Brown do first to de-escalate the situation? A. Shout back at the visitor to assert control. B. Physically remove the visitor from the premises. C. Approach the visitor calmly and ask how he can assist in resolving the issue. D. Call the police immediately without attempting to engage with the visitor. Correct answer. C. Approach the visitor calmly and ask how he can assist in resolving the issue. Explanation. Mr. Brown should first approach the visitor calmly and ask how he can assist in resolving the issue. This approach is consistent with conflict management and escalation techniques recommended in Maine's security training guidelines. By remaining calm and offering help, Mr. Brown can diffuse the visitor's anger and address the underlying problem. Shoving back, option A, would likely escalate the conflict. Physically removing the visitor, option B, should be a last resort used only if the visitor poses a threat to safety. Calling the police immediately, option D, can escalate the situation and should only be done if the visitor becomes violent or poses an imminent threat. Engaging calmly and constructively is the best initial response. Question 12. What is the correct procedure for using a fire extinguisher to put out a small fire in a main office building? A. Aim the nozzle at the flames and sweep back and forth. B. Aim the nozzle at the base of the fire and use a sweeping motion. C. Spray the extinguisher in the air to create a barrier. D. Use the extinguisher in short bursts directed at the ceiling. Correct answer. B. Aim the nozzle at the base of the fire and use a sweeping motion. Explanation. The correct procedure for using a fire extinguisher is to aim the nozzle at the base of the fire and use a sweeping motion. This technique effectively targets the source of the flames and maximizes the extinguisher's effectiveness. Aiming at the flames, option A, is less effective because it does not address the fuel source. Spraying the extinguisher in the air, option C, or at the ceiling, option D, does not help extinguish the fire and waste the extinguishing agent. Proper fire extinguisher use is crucial for safety and is a key part of fire safety training in Maine. Question 13. In Maine, what must a security guard do before making a citizen's arrest for a suspected theft? They ensure they have witnessed the crime themselves. B. Obtain permission from their supervisor. 
C. Call the police and wait for their arrival before taking any action. D. Announce to the suspect that they are under arrest and explain the reason. Correct answer. A. Ensure they have witnessed the crime themselves. Explanation. Before making a citizen's arrest for a suspected theft, a security guard in Maine must ensure they have witnessed the crime themselves. This is critical because a citizen's arrest can only be justified if the guard has direct knowledge of the offense. Obtaining permission from a supervisor, option B, is not a legal requirement, though it might be a procedural step in some organizations. Calling the police, option C, is important but does not replace the requirement of witnessing the crime for a citizen's arrest. Announcing to the suspect that they are under arrest, option D, is necessary once the decision to arrest has been made, but it comes after confirming the crime was witnessed. Question 14. A Miss Thompson, a security guard at a large concert in Maine, notices a group of individuals behaving suspiciously near the stage entrance. What should a Miss Thompson do first to ensure the safety of the event? A. Confront the individuals directly and demand to see their tickets. B. Observe and gather information about their behavior while notifying her supervisor. C. Ignore the behavior as it might be harmless. D. Evacuate the area immediately without further investigation. Correct answer. B. Observe and gather information about their behavior while notifying her supervisor. Explanation. A miss. Thompson should first observe and gather information about the suspicious behavior while notifying her supervisor. This approach ensures that she does not escalate the situation prematurely and allows for a coordinated response. Confronting the individuals directly, option A, can lead to confrontation and potential safety risks. Ignoring the behavior, option C, can leave a potential threat unaddressed. Evacuating the area immediately, option D, without further investigation might cause unnecessary panic and disruption. The correct approach prioritizes vigilance, communication, and coordination to manage potential security threats effectively. Question 15. What is a key personal security measure security guard in Maine should take when patrolling alone at night? A. Turn off their communication devices to avoid distractions. B. Follow a predictable patrol route at the same time each night. C. Use a flashlight to inspect dark areas and stay in well-lit areas as much as possible. D. Avoid using personal protective equipment to maintain mobility. Correct answer. C. Use a flashlight to inspect dark areas and stay in well-lit areas as much as possible. Explanation. When patrolling alone at night, a key personal security measure is to use a flashlight to inspect dark areas and stay in well-lit areas as much as possible. This enhances visibility and safety. Turning off communication devices, option A, can leave the guard isolated and unable to call for help if needed. Following a predictable patrol route, option B, can make the guard an easy target for planned attacks. Avoiding personal protective equipment, option D, compromises safety PP, is essential for protection during potentially hazardous encounters. The correct measure focuses on visibility and preparedness. Question 16. In Maine, under what circumstances is a security guard legally justified in using physical force? A. To detain someone for a minor policy violation. B. When verbal commands are ignored regardless of the threat level. C. Only when there is an imminent threat of physical harm to oneself or others. D. To ensure compliance with all security procedures. Correct answer. C. Only when there is an imminent threat of physical harm to oneself or others. Explanation. In Maine, a security guard is legally justified in using physical force only when there is an imminent threat of physical harm to oneself or others. This aligns with state and federal guidelines that emphasize the use of force as a last resort. Using force to detain someone for a minor policy violation, option A, or simply for ignoring verbal commands, option B, is not legally justified and can lead to legal repercussions. Ensuring compliance with security procedures, option D, does not justify the use of physical force unless there is an immediate threat. The correct answer underscores the necessity and proportionality of force. Question 17. Mr. Carter a security guard at a main university, receives a report of an active shooter on campus. What should Mr. Carter do first to ensure the safety of students and staff? A. Attempt to locate and confront the shooter immediately. B. Lock down the nearest building and guide students to secure areas. C. Call for backup and wait outside until help arrives. D. Ignore the report until it is confirmed by multiple sources. Correct answer. 
B. Lock down the nearest building and guide students to secure areas. Explanation. In the event of an active shooter report, Mr. Carter should first lock down the nearest building and guide students to secure areas. This action helps to protect individuals from potential harm by restricting the shooter's access and providing safe hiding places. Attempting to locate and confront the shooter immediately, option A, can be extremely dangerous and is not recommended for unarmed or inadequately trained personnel. Calling for backup and waiting outside, option C, delays immediate protective actions that can save lives. Ignoring the report until confirmed by multiple sources, option D, risks not responding quickly enough to prevent casualties. The correct approach emphasizes immediate protective measures and securing individuals. Question 18. A security guard in Maine encounters a person who has collapsed and is unresponsive. What is the first step the guard should take before administering CPR? A. Immediately start chest compressions. B. Check the surroundings for any immediate dangers. C. Move the person to a more comfortable position. D. Call the person's family to inform them of the situation. Correct answer. B. Check the surroundings for any immediate dangers. Explanation. The first step a security guard should take before administering CPR is to check the surroundings for any immediate dangers. This ensures the safety of both the responder and the victim. Starting chest compressions immediately, option A, is important, but only after ensuring it is safe to do so. Moving the person to a more comfortable position, option C, should only be done if necessary to avoid further harm. Calling the person's family, option D, is not a priority over immediate medical intervention. Ensuring a safe environment is crucial before providing first aid or CPR. Question 19. In Maine, what is the primary objective of a security guard when mediating a conflict between two individuals? A. To assert authority and control over both parties. B. To listen to both sides and find a mutually acceptable solution. C. To separate the individuals and handle the situation independently. D. To impose a solution based on the guard's own judgment. Correct answer. B. To listen to both sides and find a mutually acceptable solution. Explanation. The primary objective when mediating a conflict is to listen to both sides and find a mutually acceptable solution. This approach ensures fairness and helps to escalate the situation. Asserting authority and control, option A, can escalate tensions. Separating the individuals, option C, may be necessary for safety but does not address the underlying issue. Imposing. A solution based on the guard's judgment, option D, can lead to dissatisfaction and further conflict. Effective conflict resolution involves communication, understanding, and collaboration. Question 20. A Miss Green, a security guard at a main office building, notices on CCTV that an individual is attempting to bypass the building's access control system late at night. What should a Miss Green do first? A. Confront the individual directly and demand identification. B. Alert on-site security personnel and monitor the individual's actions. C. Ignore the situation since it might be an authorized person. D. Call the police immediately without further observation. Correct answer. B. Alert on-site security personnel and monitor the individual's actions. Explanation. A miss. Green should first alert on-site security personnel and monitor the individual's actions. This ensures a coordinated response and continuous surveillance, allowing for appropriate action if the situation escalates. Confronting the individual directly, option A, can be risky and should be done with caution and backup. Ignoring the situation, option C, could allow a potential security breach to go unchecked. Calling the police immediately, option D, might be necessary if the threat is imminent, but initially observing and coordinating with on-site personnel is a prudent first step to assess the situation accurately. Question 21. Why is detailed documentation and reporting critical for security guards in Maine? A. To provide entertainment for the management team. B. To ensure accurate records are kept for legal and investigative purposes. C. To create an illusion of productivity. D. To confuse potential criminals. Correct answer. B. To ensure accurate records are kept for legal and investigative purposes. Explanation. Detailed documentation and reporting are critical because they ensure accurate records are kept for legal and investigative purposes. These reports can be used as evidence in court for internal investigations or to improve security measures. Providing entertainment, option A, or creating an illusion of productivity, option C, are not relevant or professional reasons. 
confusing potential criminals, option D, is not. A practical or ethical purpose for detailed documentation, accurate and thorough reports maintain accountability and support legal procedures. Question 22. What is a key verbal communication strategy for a security guard in Maine to defuse a potentially violent situation? A. Speaking in a loud and commanding voice to assert control. B. Using calm and respectful language to address the individual's concerns. C. Ignoring the person's complaints to avoid escalating the situation. D. Threatening the individual with police action immediately. Correct answer. B. Using calm and respectful language to address the individual's concerns. Explanation. A key verbal communication strategy to defuse a potentially violent situation is using calm and respectful language to address the individual's concerns. This approach can help escalate tension and shows that the guard is listening and empathetic. Speaking in a loud and commanding voice, option A, can escalate the situation. Ignoring the person's complaints, option C, can lead to frustration and potential violence. Threatening the individual with police action, option D, can escalate tensions and should be used as a last resort. Effective communication is essential for conflict resolution. Question 23. Mr. Lewis, a security guard at a main warehouse, notices an unfamiliar vehicle parked in a restricted area during his routine patrol. What should Mr. Lewis do first? A. Immediately tow the vehicle away. B. Approach the vehicle to confront the driver of present. C. Record the vehicle's details and report the incident to his supervisor. D. Ignore the vehicle as it might belong to a new employee. Correct answer. C. Record the vehicle's details and report the incident to his supervisor. Explanation. Mr. Lewis should first record the vehicle's details, license plate, make model, and color, and report the incident to his supervisor. This action ensures that the situation is documented and allows his supervisor to determine the appropriate response. Immediately towing the vehicle, option A, might be premature without verifying its status. Confronting the driver, option B, can be risky and should only be done with caution and backup. Ignoring the vehicle, option D, can result in overlooking a potential security breach. Proper documentation and reporting are essential for a systematic and safe response. Question 24. Under Maine law, when is a security guard justified in using force to detain a suspect? A. When the suspect refuses to provide identification. B. When the suspect is fleeing after committing a violent crime. C. Whenever the security guard feels threatened. D. When the suspect is loitering in a restricted area. Correct answer. B. When the suspect is fleeing after committing a violent crime. Explanation. In Maine, a security guard is justified in using force to detain a suspect if the suspect is fleeing after committing a violent crime. The use of force must be proportionate to the threat and only used to prevent imminent harm. Refusal to provide identification, option A, does not justify the use of force. Feeling threatened, option C, may justify defensive actions but not necessarily the use of force for detention unless there is an imminent threat of harm. Watering in a restricted area, option D, is not sufficient justification for the use of force. Legal guidelines emphasize the necessity and proportionality of using force. Question 25. How should a security guard in Maine handle a situation where a member of the public becomes verbally abusive? A. Respond with equally aggressive language to assert authority. B. Ignore the individual and walk away. C. Remain calm and use escalation techniques to address the situation. D. Immediately call the police to handle the situation. Correct answer. C. Remain calm and use escalation techniques to address the situation. Explanation. When faced with a verbally abusive member of the public, a security guard should remain calm and use escalation techniques to address the situation. This approach helps to diffuse tension and resolve the issue without escalating conflict. Responding with aggressive language, option A, can worsen the situation. Ignoring the individual and walking away, option B, can lead to unresolved issues and potential escalation. While calling the police, option D, might be necessary in severe cases, it is not the immediate first step unless there is a threat of violence. Descalation is key to maintaining professionalism and safety. Question 26. Miss Rivera, a security guard at a main shopping mall, notices smoke coming from a store. What should she do first to ensure the safety of shoppers? A. Attempt to put out the fire herself using a fire extinguisher. B. Immediately evacuate the mall and call the fire department. C. Notify the store manager and wait for instructions. 
de close the store and prevent anyone from entering? Correct answer. B. Immediately evacuate the mall and call the fire department. Explanation. Upon noticing smoke amiss, Rivera should immediately evacuate the mall and call the fire department. This ensures the safety of all shoppers and staff and allows professionals to handle the fire. Tempting to put out the fire herself, option A, can be dangerous and might not effectively address the situation. Notifying the store manager and waiting for instructions, option C, can cause delays in emergency response. Closing the store and preventing entry, option D, is insufficient without a full evacuation. Prompt evacuation and alerting emergency services are the appropriate steps in a fire emergency. Question 27. What is the primary purpose of conducting incident reporting in a main workplace? A. To create unnecessary paperwork for employees. B. To identify trends and patterns to prevent future incidents. C. To blame individuals for accidents and mishaps. D. To entertain management with stories of workplace incidents. Correct answer. B. To identify trends and patterns to prevent future incidents. Explanation. The primary purpose of incident reporting in a main workplace is to identify trends and patterns to prevent future incidents. By analyzing incident reports, organizations can implement corrective measures, provide additional training, or adjust procedures to improve workplace safety. Creating unnecessary paperwork, option A, and blaming individuals, option C, are counterproductive and do not contribute to improving safety. Entertaining management, option D, is not a valid reason for incident reporting. Effective incident reporting focuses on continuous improvement and risk reduction. Question 28. During a large event in Maine, what is the security guard's primary responsibility regarding crowd control? A. Encouraging attendees to engage in disruptive behavior for entertainment. B. Maintaining a visible presence to deter potential troublemakers. C. Ignoring overcrowding and letting attendees manage themselves. D. Using force to disperse the crowd at the first sign of commotion. Correct answer. B. Maintaining a visible presence to deter potential troublemakers. Explanation. During a large event, the security guard's primary responsibility regarding crowd control is maintaining a visible presence to deter potential troublemakers. This proactive approach helps prevent disturbances and promotes a safe environment for all attendees. Encouraging disruptive behavior, option A, is irresponsible and can escalate tensions. Ignoring overcrowding, option C, can lead to safety hazards and potential emergencies. Using force immediately, option D, can worsen the situation and should only be considered as a last resort. Visible deterrence is an effective strategy for managing crowds safely. Question 29. Mr. Anderson, a security guard in Maine, witnesses a shoplifting incident in progress. What should Mr. Anderson do first? A. Approach the suspected shoplifter and apprehend them immediately. B. Call the police and provide a description of the suspect and their actions. C. Ignore the incident since it's the store's responsibility. D. Inform the store manager and wait for instructions. Correct answer. D. Inform the store manager and wait for instructions. Explanation. In this scenario, Mr. Anderson should first inform the store manager and wait for instructions. The store manager will likely have established protocols for handling shoplifting incidents, which Mr. Anderson should follow to ensure proper procedure and legal compliance. Approaching and apprehending the suspect, option A, without guidance from the store manager can lead to safety risks and legal complications. Calling the police, option B, is important, but the store manager's guidance should be sought first. Ignoring the incident, option C, is not appropriate as it can encourage further theft. Communication with the store manager is key to managing the situation effectively. Question 30. Why is conducting regular risk assessments important for security guards in Maine? A. To comply with insurance requirements and avoid policy cancellations. B. To identify and mitigate potential security threats before they occur. C. To demonstrate the guard's intelligence and knowledge of security. D. To ensure security guards are constantly busy with paperwork. Correct answer. B. To identify and mitigate potential security threats before they occur. Explanation. Inducting regular risk assessments is important because it helps identify and mitigate potential security threats before they occur. This proactive approach enhances safety and prevents incidents. Complying with insurance requirements, option A, 
is a benefit but not the primary reason for risk assessments. Demonstrating intelligence, option C, is not a valid reason and the focus is on practical security improvements. Insuring guards are busy with paperwork, option D, is counterproductive. Effective risk assessments focus on safety, preparedness, and prevention.